Hello, I am Gregory the Poor Typist, and I have a notebook related video for you here, which of course means this is also a pen related video. So, I have five different uh, notebooks here, three of which I have not tested yet, and two I tested off camera. So, these three I shall set aside for now. And we will start with these two. All right. So this first one actually comes from moo.com. M-O-O.com. Just a simple little, uh, there you see um, their logo. A simple little notebook. I had high hopes for this because um, I, I know Moo to be high quality um, as far as their, their printing services. So I thought I would try their notebook. Uh, this is lined. Um, it does have this funny little uh, cardstock in the middle. Not entirely sure what the point of that is, but uh, here we see the, the writing tests. Um, I didn't write down the, the inks, um, yeah, but that's okay. So, uh, it says here, this is your Moo soft cover journal, designed, printed, and bound in London. 60 pages of Munkin crystal paper, 100 GSM, 70 pound text, four pages of color plan paper, 135 GSM, 90 pound text. Go forth and write. <laughs> I like that. Uh, now, when it says monk in crystal paper, you think, wow, that, this has to be good for fountain pens. But I will tell you it is not. <laughs> uh, the Bina Magic. Uh... On, on this paper, it actually wrote more like a fine, but that pen to me seems almost like an extra fine. But regardless, that one probably fared the best. Um, almost all the others bled through. The next best would probably be the, the Moon Man M2. But pretty much everything else bled through, and the Schaefer Viewpoint, which is not a good pen, by the way. Um, you see that, I mean, that lays down tons of ink. So, of course, that even bled through to, to the next page. So, yeah. So, unfortunately, I do not recommend Moo um, for fountain pens. This next one, I also had a high hopes for. Um, Denik. Yes, this is from Denik. And see there. And again, I had high hopes for this one. This one I didn't even bother writing the <laughs> the pens I was using. Here we had just some some like gel pens, essentially. Or no, uh, these were felt felt tip pens or um, porous point pens, as they're called nowadays. And then starting down here were um, the fountain pens. And again, <laughs> and this one's even worse, actually. Every single one bled through. So I was very disappointed. <laughs> That is a ton of bleeding. So, yeah. So as, as nice looking as this one is, nicely bound. There you see Denik. I mean, it's beautiful, but not fountain pen friendly. So that brings me to this one, uh, Lockbee. Now Lockbee is a brand that comes up a fair amount in the fountain pen community. I think more so for their pen cases. Is that right? I believe so. Um, 
but I do have high hopes for this, but let's find out. I like that this is a nice, simple, to the point notebook. Just a, a thin, you know, one that you can easily carry with you. Uh, it does have some interesting features. So, first of all, the numbers are lined. And second of all, even though it's ruled, uh, it does have these, these cheater lines, which I assume could easily allow you to, to uh, make a grid or tables or what have you. Uh, so that's a that's a nice feature. The paper is super super thin. So <laughs> already my my expectations have been lowered dramatically. Okay, unfortunately it does not say the paper weight on here, but just just based on what I'm feeling, it's it's not gonna do well. Super, super thin paper. Okay, but we have to give it a chance, right? All right, and I have started, where do you see the thread binding? So I feel comfortable bending that back so it lays flat. <laughs> and I'm just gonna quickly go through these Okay, uh, these last two are Jinhao 992s. I didn't want to bother taking the time to write that out in calligraphy. So, <laughs> so there you go. But anyway, all right. So as far as the surface of the paper, it did really, really well. There's no spread. Uh, no feathering, and you're getting some some excellent, excellent shading. Yeah, so very pleased with that. But the proof is in the pudding. Again, I, I have very low expectations for this, just because this paper is so thin. But... Wow! <laughs> Wow. Wow. That is incredible. Most of them have just the tiniest bit of shadowing, but there is not a drop of bleed through. That is incredible. I am extremely impressed. Well, very, very interesting. And that bodes well for getting more of these in the future. So good on you, Lockby. Good on you.
So again, this is the lock be ruled with stitched binding. Wow, very, very impressed. This next one, I, I don't expect to live up to that. <laughs> so uh, my wife and I were on just a little mini vacation, just a weekend getaway down in San Diego. Uh, we're both um, office supply junkies, so I got very excited, or we both got very excited when we saw just a little indie office supply store amongst all these touristy gift shops. So of course we went in. Um, <laughs> a lot of their stock was uh, clearly new old stock. <laughs> Uh, I mean, you had these brand new pens with faded caps, uh, plastic caps, you know. Um, uh, yeah, some some product that had clearly been in, in their inventory for probably decades. <laughs> um, but they did have these, these new little pocket journals, traveler pocket journals, um, apparently by Pentalic. Pentelic Traveler Pocket Journal. And 74 pound, 120 GSM. So that bodes well. Thick paper is good. Uh, 160 pages, four by six. I love this size. I love the cover. It feels like it's, I'm not sure what material that is. It's definitely not leather, but uh, anyway, let's give it a try. All right, so here it is. I love the logo. That's very nice. It's a raised logo. Very nice. Got the elastic band, which is a nice, always a nice feature. It does create these little indents on the cover, but you know. The the binding seems very stiff. This this cover is, is very thick, but it's it's pretty soft. Nice end papers. I like the color on the lines there. I don't know how well you can pick that up. A little pocket in the back. And it does have a ribbon. Now, of course, with this, with this, uh, this kind of notebook, you know, there's always the issue of it not laying flat without breaking the spine. <laughs> but we'll we'll do the best we can. Okay, so this one, I'm not very hopeful. Um, first of all, the Surface did pr pretty well. Not as well as the Lockbee. Um, first of all, the, the texture of the paper. There's definitely some texture. Um, on the Caveco Perkeo, I felt a huge, huge difference. Um, I was actually sensing some drag, so... Uh, yeah, <laughs> but, um, 
there's there's only a little bit of feathering and not not much if any spread actually so that's pretty good but i am not hopeful at all that that these didn't bleed through um just the it, the paper doesn't feel coated i guess so i'm i'm willing to bet at least some of these bled through although the paper is very very thick but as you see from the the lockby thickness doesn't necessarily matter so here we go hey <laughs> i stand corrected i stand corrected there's just a tiny tiny uh just two tiny little specks of just a hint just a hint of bleed through um even though it's thicker paper there's maybe just a hint of a real hint of uh shadowing wow i'm impressed now the the texture again could be could be you know more pleasant to write on but it depends on the pen because most of these pens wrote fine i don't know if my issues with the um Jinhao 992s. I don't know if that was me or if it was the pen or if it was the paper. Um, I typically don't have that much trouble with the <laughs> with the pen itself, so I suspect it was either me or the paper. Um, yeah, but the others wrote fine. Again, the uh, Caveco Perkeo uh, that that was not a pleasant writing experience. Um, yeah, but. Look at that. Very, very pleased. Very pleased. This will get some use. And again, that was the Pentallic Traveler Pocket Journal. And I do believe most of the su success of this one came just simply from the weight of the paper. Very, very heavy paper, so. But yeah, it works. And we have one more to try. Now this <laughs> this was a uh, Facebook ad, I believe, and I'm a sucker for Facebook ads. Facebook knows I love fountain pens and coffee. Also, it tries to sell me coffee-related items all the time. Um, but I'm always getting these notices about um, station, uh, you know, notebooks, journals, that sort of thing. This one, most of them, when I click on the ad, they're like, I don't know, like 40 or $50. And I'm like, uh, no. <laughs> but this one was reasonable. Uh, on sale, I believe it was either 20 or 25 Either way, considering what you're about to see, it's, it's a good deal. Um, yeah. So... I assume this is pronounced journalier, stationery. It has this nice kind of gift box and a, a beautiful, beautiful uh, cover here. Look at that. 120 GSM. So that bodes well. Uh, heavy paper typically does, um, you know, you don't experience the bleeding. 188 pages, 100% recycled. Uh, there's a little concern there because sometimes fountain pens don't seem, seem to work as well on recycled paper. Um, this is the uh, Journalier Courage. That's referring to the artwork there. Um, that's what they called this particular one. Uh, bounded A5 hardcover journal features original artwork and luxurious 100 20 GSM paper. So let's take a look. Look at that. That is beautiful. Um, very, very nice. It has an excellent feel to it. It actually has like a an sort of unexpected softness on the spine there. <laughs> Interesting. Beautiful. I love that artwork. 
Um, I know a lot of people don't like it when the company puts their name or logo on the front cover, but, um, you know, at least it's a good name, right? <laughs> yeah, that's wonderful. All right, we have the elastic. Some nice, thick um, end papers. It is a a dot grid, which um, is, it's okay. Um, it's not my first choice, but I don't believe they had a lined one. I think they just had the dot grid and I believe blank. I could be wrong. And you get not one, but two ribbons, which is very nice. Uh, as you see there, the pages are numbered. That's always a nice feature, um, but it's a feature you don't often get. Let's see. It lays very flat. I think that's one of the things they mentioned on the website. That's excellent. That is excellent. And that explains why this is so soft. Brilliant, brilliant. That is excellent. You do have the obligatory pocket in the back. Ooh, a nice big pocket, my goodness. <laughs> uh, and it has the sort of cloth tape. I almost want to call it bellows, but I know it's not bellows. <laughs> anyway. Again, it lays nice and flat, nice and flat. So here we go again. There you go. So, I did notice uh, the Caveco Perkeo, again, had issues on the, the texture of this paper. And it, it was very interesting. It, it, as I was writing with it on this paper, it sounded like I was writing with a felt tip or a marker even. Um, just because uh, it was creating almost a squeaky sound. That was very, very interesting. And as a result of that, I got distracted. <laughs> and you see my, my, that's supposed to be an O there. <laughs> I was like, what is going on here? It was, it was squeaking at me. Uh, the cross calace also um, did a hint of that same same sound effect, um, you know, uh, it didn't drag quite as much, but the Perkeo was dragging a little bit on this paper as well. Um, but you see here, there's, there is, uh, there's no feathering. I don't believe there's any spread. Yeah, there's no spread. I would especially expect that on the Calais just because that lays down a ton of ink. Um, 
So it looks great on the surface. But again, the proof is in the pudding. So. Okay, it didn't it didn't fare as well as the other two. Um with the uh, uh Kaveco Perkeo. And I don't know how well you can even make this out, but the Kaveco Perkeo uh there's some no bleed through, but there's some definite shadowing. And also on the Hungbian Black Dahlia, especially over here towards the end, um, th there you have a few spots of some some uh, moderate shadowing. Uh, the rest is fairly light. Uh, actually, uh, up here there's uh, some moderate shadowing. That was on the Moon Man Q1. But this is, this is totally usable. Totally usable. So I'm pleased. I am pleased. Very nice. All right, I was a little concerned about this one, <laughs> I must say. But the laying flat, that's that's a beautiful feature. You see there how the, the spine really collapses. And that's what's required for a lay flat. Wow, I'm impressed. All right, so let's rank these, shall we? In fifth place, we have the Denik. In fourth place, Mu. In third place, Journalier. In second place, Pentalic. And in first place, The lock be. All right. Well, hopefully you found this informative. Um, I am very excited that three out of five of these are perfectly acceptable with fountain pens. Lock be highly recommended. Pentalic, a real surprise. Definitely usable. Journalier stationary, very usable. Um, not quite the best, but it's beautiful. It lays flat and the price was right. Mu, not recommended. And Denik, definitely not recommended. All right, well, there you go. Thank you so much. Thank you for patience with this video. I will see you next time.